Today we're looking at making stencils on Photoshop. We're going to do some screen prints later on. Before you start, you need to select an image to work from. Ideally, something with a lot of contrast for the facial features that could be defined. The first one I've got I could work from. It's got quite a lot of definition and quite a nice plain background that helps the face stand out. The next one along has a lot of definition on the hand, but maybe some of the facial features are less well defined. There's a lot of contrast in this one, perhaps too much though, as one side of the face is missing all the features. This one here has a lot of definition on the face. It does have some background detail that we need to get rid of, but actually I think this is a good one to work on, because you can clearly see the different facial features. You'll find Photoshop in the Start menu under Adobe, and scroll down until you find Photoshop. Rather than going to File and New to start a new file here, use File and Open. That way when you open up your image, the file is already sized in the exact same size the image is. In my image there's a lot of background detail that I want to remove from the stencil, so I'm going to use the Quick Selection tool here to select that background area, ready to delete it. You can either click or hold down the mouse button and select all the areas that you want to select. Here I've selected the background, and this is what I'm going to get rid of. I've accidentally selected the ear, and there's an easy way to get rid of this from your selection. If you go up to the top of the screen, you can use the same tool to remove parts of the selection. Here, I just click again to unselect the ear, and make sure I don't delete it. Some bits weren't selected originally, like this little bit here. I've gone back to the plus icon, and I'm select those little bits extra, and I've got all the things I want to delete are selected. Now, before I can find and delete that background, I need to unlock the layer. In the bottom right corner, there's my layer, it's locked. I double click, then click OK. It's now unlocked, ready to delete that background. I simply press delete here, and the background is gone. Now I've finished with selection, I go to select, deselect, and I've got rid of it. This next stage is optional, but I like doing it to help me see what's going on. Under layers, new layer, create a new layer. Make sure you drag this layer under the layer that's got your face on it. And then I'm going to go to the paint bucket tool down the left. And I'm going to pick a bright colour, in this case blue, and I'm just going to fill that background with a background colour. I find this just helps me see what's going on, but it makes no difference really. Making sure you've selected the layer with your face on it, go to Image, Adjustment, scroll down to black and white. We're going to put your face into black and white. Just press OK. The next stage again, Image, Adjustments. This time you're going to Brightness and Contrast. There's a bit of trial and error here. You're basically playing around with the brightness and contrast, so there's contrast between the facial features, but that none of the facial features blend into each other. They're also clearly defined. We use a different tool now, but essentially for the same reason. Under Image, Adjustments, this time Levels. With this tool you're essentially playing around with how dark the darkest tones are, how light the lightest tones are, and then where your mid-tones are. And there's three sliders you can see the same here. Again, it's trial and error. What you're looking for is a lot of contrast between the features, but that none of the features start to merge together. So you'd have to play around with this yourself and make a common sense decision. Now that you've got clear defined features, it's time to make it extensive. Again, image adjustments, this time posterize. And because we're making just a pure black and white stencil, you can use two levels when you posterize it. Later on, I'll show you how you can make multicolor stencils using more levels than one. But for now, two will do. Now you're ready to save. Go to File, scroll down to Save As. Make sure to give it a name that makes sense, something you can find it as later. And most crucially, we're going to change it from a Photoshop format into a JPEG format. This means it's easier to print easier to store and transfer between computers. Next we're going to make a multi-layer stencil, something that you can print out in separate colours when you do screen prints. I'm going to carry on from where I left off. A useful tool here, edit step backwards. Takes me back to before I post it in two colors. I'm just playing around with image adjustments, bright and contrast again, and also image adjustments, levels, just to make sure I'm happy that there is enough contrast between the facial features and the facial features are clearly defined. We're going to use a new tool now. Along the top, go to filter, go down to artistic, and select cutout. This is very similar to Posterize, and both will work well for this job. I'm going to show you this one now. If you scroll out so you can see the face, again there's missing trial and error here. Play around sliding the tools on the right, 
until you've got a face that has a lot of contrast between the features and every feature is clearly well defined. Each of the grey tones here will be a different colour. So the light grey will be a light colour, the mid grey will be a mid colour, and the black will be a dark colour in my picture. So essentially what I've got here is a stencil that allows me to make a three colour screen print. Again, file, save as, say this is a different file name, so it's easy to find, and crucially, change that format to JPEG. Do that each time. It's much easier to store and much, much better for printing. I'm going to step backwards and show you the difference for how you use posterize rather than cutout. Image, adjustment, posterize. This time, rather than doing two layers like in the two color screen print, I'm going to do a few more. In this one, the white, the grey, and the black will be three different colors. Why would you use posterize rather than cutout? Sometimes the two filters just go differently, better for different images. You can also use Photoshop to help you decide what colours to do in the screen print. I'm going to load up the original photograph and we'll see why in a second. I've also loaded up the stencil that I've just made. What I'm planning to do here is use the colours from the original photograph to put into my stencil. So, I go to the original photograph, there's a tool there called the eyedropper, and I just hold and hover over tones and hues in my face, select the one I want. This time I'm going to go back to the stencil, to the top, paint bucket tool, and I can just drop that colour straight into my stencil. You don't necessarily need to do this to cut the stencil out, but it does help when you're planning your colours and seeing what works well. You can also save several different edits in different colours and have extra work in your sketchbooks. I've used quick selection here to try and select the hand, because I know that if I drop that colour into the hand, because it's connected to the apron at the top there, all of it will turn that colour. So I'm going to quick select the hand, and I'm going to use the minus tool there to get rid of bits that shouldn't be selected. And it means that this time, when I use the paint bucket tool and drop the colour in, it will only drop it into the areas that are selected. So as you can see now, find the paint bucket, drop the colour in, and it only selects the hand. And there you get an idea of how your thing will look when you use different colours. If you're playing around different colours, make sure to save them as separate edits, because you can have several pieces there for your sketchbook and to put them in the portfolio. As the eyes have come out, and lost their white colour. I'm just going to select those areas. And once I've got them selected, I go down to the colour at the bottom, change it to white, use the paint bucket to drop in those selected areas again, and now I can quite clearly see how my stencil may well turn out as a screen. Again, make sure when you're saving, you save it as a JPEG. The only time you don't want to save it in the Photoshop format is if you still want to edit it later and work back again on it. I'm going to try something similar with a slightly more complex stencil, one more layer. Use the eyedropper on the original image to pick the tone you want to use, or the colour you want to use. The paint bucket tool is there. If it looks like this, sometimes gradients are selected. Just hold it down and go to paint bucket. Again, drop the colours in. And I want a slightly lighter version of the same colour, so I click on the colour there, and I use the sliders here to make it slightly lighter, change the colour very slightly, and I'm comparing the new colour with the current colour to see which two work well. They look nice together, but there's enough difference between them that you can clearly define them. Again, drop this in, and you get a really good idea of what your stencil is going to look like as a screen. Again, you can play around with the colours here. If you make different edits, make sure to save them separately, so you can show the examiner you've thought about different colour schemes and get yourself some marks there. Finally, save as, again, make sure it's JPEG and your stencil is ready to print. When it comes to printing, open up the JPEG, much easier to print from there, which is why we saved it like that earlier. Go to print, and as it's a JPEG, you can select whatever size you want. We're going for the full page, so it's A4. Make sure that you print at least a couple of extra spare copies. You want one copy for however many colours are in your screen print, and a couple of spares in case you're making mistakes when you're cutting out stencils. 